All right, everybody, so I gotta ask you guys a question. What is the most important thing you could argue for every damage phase? Some would definitely say a well, and I could agree with you on that. I ain't gonna argue. However, some of you probably said a debuff. That's right, that's what I'm referring to, a debuff. Cause who doesn't like boosting all sources of incoming damage on the boss? These days, we have two main sources of going about applying a 30% debuff, that being the Tether Super for the Hunter, or the good old Tractor Cannon, everybody's favorite heavy shotgun. Or maybe you like Acreus, who knows? However, most of the time, you can totally just Tractor Cannon a boss and not have to cough up an entire super to do so, and because Tractor Cannon is a weapon, you can keep the boss debuffed for the entire damage phase as two Tractor Cannon shots will apply the 30% debuff longer than a deadfall tether will. And some bosses' examples like Oryx can't even be tethered. So in an ideal situation, if you can get a tractor cannon during your damage phase, you're gonna go for it. And in this video, that's what we try to accomplish, a very solid build for you if you are on tractor cannon duty. Still put out some pretty decent damage while applying the crucial debuff and not having to cough up a super in order to do so. We're going to be on the Hunter today as I feel they are one of the best classes to be on the tractor cannon job. Do it pretty well and not lose out on too, too much damage compared to the rest of the fire team. With that being said, ladies and gentlemen, let's go ahead and dive right in. So we'll start off with the subclass. I feel like the aspects are the easiest to explain. Flow state and lethal current. These two go very well hand in hand with one another. I feel like these two are kind of a given on what to use as your aspects for a typical arc hunter build combination blow gambler's dodge i'm using a pulse grenade fragments we got spark of resistance spark of shock for extra jolting from our grenades spark of magnitude so our pulse grenades last a little bit longer and then we have spark of amplitude so we can print orbs of power since this build mainly revolves around you being on tractor cannon duty and still doing some good damage you're gonna be on double special i'm just letting y'all know right now you're gonna be on double special and having spark of amplitude is gonna allow you to print orbs of power for some special ammo of course your super is the stripper pole hit that boss with the tractor cannon and yeet your good old dancing pole right in their face let's talk about the weapons here obviously tractor cannon that's the main purpose of this setup you are on tractor cannon duty so you gotta find a way to put in some good damage even while having to be on tractor cannon duty. Luckily, Arc Hunter is one of the best classes to do that, especially because that stripper pole is gonna be hidden with one of our main exotics for the setup being Star Eater Scales, but we'll get into that later. Now, since we're applying the juicy 30% debuff for everybody, what special weapons are we gonna be using? I have chosen to go with the Aramite. This is the new Season of the Witch Solar Fusion Rifle High Impact Frame. I've rolled mine with Envious Assassin Control Burst, and then also a Charge Time Masterwork. Control Burst, I believe, is a 25% damage buff, and it's going to reduce the charge time for a short duration. So, because you have Envious and Controlled, and you're on Tractor Cannon Duty, this means this is going to be the perfect setup for you to dump out that Envious Mag with Control Burst fully up. Me and my buddy did a little damage test between Aramite and Cartesian, and Aramite won just with the raw damage output, full reserves, half reserves, it just outputs more damage. So that is why we're going to be using the Aramites. It's got a fat mag, especially with MBS, so you don't have to worry about reloading as much. And it's the perfect spot, perfect setup for this gun to shine well. Kinetic weapon, since it's a melee build, your Arc Hunter, I have on our one-two punch shotgun for our utility purposes. However, for going into damage, you can keep this on, or you could swap it out for maybe a Vorpal Aggressive Frame Shotgun, maybe another Fusion Rifle, or my personal favorite, a Kinetic Tremor Supremacy, as with Enhanced Kinetic Tremors, you only need to shoot two shots at the target to proc Kinetic Tremors. They don't have to be precision, it's just two shots. Allows for a little bit of passive damage while you are shooting your Aramite. So that's mainly it for the weapons. Your most important are obviously Tractor Cannon, because, yo, you're on tractor cannon duty, my boy. <laughs> you better have on tractor cannon if you're on tractor cannon duty, you know what I mean? And then your actual main damage weapon is going to be the Aramite with Control Burst and Envious Assassin. Let's talk about armor. So this, what I have on right now, is what we're going to be using for, like, boss damage, okay? And even in lower end content, you can get away with running around with your star ears on if you really want to. However, if you're by yourself or you're doing more difficult content, are set up for dealing with a lot more ads. Personally, I'm going with the Liar's Handshake. You could go with Assassin's Cowl if you wanted to on your helmet. However, I'm personally just gonna have Liars on 
in between damage phases. This is mainly because our boots are very important for the setup. Obviously, since our Star Eaters are going to be having our triple Solar Surge on, I want to have another set of boots in which I can still get some mileage out of with things like Stacks on Stacks, Recuperation, and Absolution. Since we're on double special, Stacks on Stacks is going to make it to where we just get those three armor chargers for special finisher that much quicker. I also have a time dilation for when we do switch over to our Star Eaters with our three Solar Surges. I would use your chest mods for mainly just resist mods to keep yourself alive. Then your helmet and gauntlet mods, they're not going to change. Heavy handed is going to be a must. It's going to be one of your main sources of generating orbs of power. I just threw on an impact induction so I get my grenade back a little bit more often. And then your helmet also. It doesn't matter what your helmet is. Assassin's Cowl, a legendary helmet, hands-on, and dynamo. If you want to go the Assassin's Cowl route for in-between damage phases, once again, go for it. Just make sure you have on dynamo and hands-on. Maybe double dynamo if you want to, but I just got one of each. Before damage phase starts, make sure you switch to your Star Eaters and go pick up four orbs so you get your Feast of Light procs so that your gathering storm is going to do its proper super juice of course make sure you tractor the boss before you throw your super so it does more damage then once you apply tractor cannon my boy you just switch to your air might and you just start firing it you can go into a damage phase with just your one two punch shotgun on if you want to but since you're going to be swapping to star eater scales right before the damage phase starts you're already going to be in your menu so you could probably switch it for something like a supremacy aggressive frame shotgun fusion rifle or of course a good old slug shotgun but you don't have to stress too much on the kinetic slot as your main dps weapon is going to be your air might one more top pre-damage phase loadout with these weapons during damage this is the set of mods you'll have on literally just the star eaters change as they have the surge mods on them since tractor cannon is such a meta option this day and age and we have a day one raid this week you know we're going to be applying some debuffs coming up so having a decent build for your tractor cannon player that allows them to do some pretty decent damage can be pretty nice gathering storm also jolts the target which we all know how good jolt still is even after its little nerf you could totally argue hopping on blade barrage to try and make use of monochromatic maestro however the raw neutral game and just dealing with combat ads in general as a tractor cannon player on solar hunter I feel like isn't as strong and as easy as Arc Hunter is. But if you're a gamer and you want to roll like that, by all means, man, go ahead. Do your thing. I ain't stopping you. And if you really want to run some monochromatic maestro, the fusion rifle that I would recommend would be the Techie Enforce or the Iterative Loop. But we're not focusing on monochromatic maestro in this build, as we're more focused on a solid tractor cannon build for good damage, no matter the season, that has good survivability, can clear adds, and here we are. We all know how strong Arc Hunter is, and I feel like it's the perfect class to run Tractor Cannon. Your second best bet would probably be your Titan, and I feel like the Warlock isn't really the best for a Tractor Cannon, since most of the time they're on well, and then being on well, and not having a heavy do damage means, dude, their damage is just really, really just cut into off the rip. It's not the newest build on the block, but it does have a new toy. Thank you for watching the video. You guys be safe, and we'll see you in the next one.